was a great <laughs> introduction with the kids. So kids is obviously in the center of Reima. Uh, how many of you know Reima? First-hand experiences, anyone? Yes, quite a many. Uh, Reima is 73 year old, but a startup. So my presentation is all about that, what it is. Uh, it really starts from the 1944. Uh, that was a quite a long time ago, and if you remember, 1944 was the year when world was actually burning. Do you remember? <laughs> you maybe not, but our grandfathers and mothers maybe. So this is the image we'd like to share. Reima actually made a clothing for the war, uh, 1944, snowsuits. But right after that, uh, the manufacturer actually figured that these are quite durable things. And who are the kind of the toughest group to do clothing? Kids, right? So we changed the focus. So kids have been in the center of Rayma and how we do things from 1944. That's a long time. Uh, however, at the moment, Rayma is a global brand. It's sold over 70 countries across the world. We have nine online stores, also in Russia. It's a little bit different story, but anyway, we are there. We have also presence in China through our partner. We have 40 brand stores and outlets and franchise shops across the world and, and growing. So this is the situation as it is now. We acquired uh, the startup called Finnish Baby Box earlier this year, which has ac actually expanding our reach across the globe, especially in Japan. They are really big in Japan. Finnish baby box. And a little bit about background. We have sold now 7 million products annually. And it's growing massively. And Brad Net sales has doubled from 2012 to 2017. It has doubled. So when we are talking about the startup, we are actually talking about the leg that we have taken from 2012. Before that, it was a different story. Over 80% of our net sales come from international markets. So Rayma is not Finnish as a market sense. It's really international as a brand. And uh, last year, our net sales was $85 million, dollars, uh, euros, sorry. And this year, I will tell you later how much it is. Nordic Root. Like I said, it comes from the 1944, but what has been essence in our journey is really that we have been able to innovate ourselves every year, every time. Whether that is clothing material or something related to the technology, like in my hand, I will tell you, tell you more about that. Or digital channels. We have constantly creating something new. However, this is the essence. It's not the clothing itself. It's the joy of movement. There is a difference. And that is the difference also that we are now aiming for with the startup mode. It's a joy of movement, not the clothing. It's the lifestyle for the whole family, actually. And of course, this is the center. It's very durable, high quality, detailed, clothing. So we do understand the situation that kids are in when they're wearing Rayma clothing. I'll tell you one example that uh, resell of the Rayma product can be more than the product that you're selling in the new. Some of the products are so wanted. Think about that. We do have uh, retail shops. This is from Beijing. They are standard, they are branded. Isomena, you may have missed it there, just opened. But this is the big business. Our reference customers, it's a wholesale. Still is 
of our whole states. So if this is the big business and it's growing, why do we need own channels? Can we just you know, focus on the wholesale? Anyone? Why do we need own channels? It's the brand, right? And it's being close to the user, being close to the end customer, so to speak. If we stay in the wholesale, we don't have the control. We are not piloting. That's the, that's the thing. And if we think about the journey that we are taking, I used to take a run during the weekends. Actually, Mika here from Southeast Asia knows this, that uh, I, I used to run during the weekends, and I have the same route every time. I run to the forest, I know the trees, I know the turns. It's very relaxing, it's easy. However, when we have done this for the wholesale, for you know, 68 years, it's very easy. We know the turns, we know what to sell, etc. What happens when you change the route? The other side, of the opposite direction. How the forest starts to look different. Exactly. It looks very different. <laughs> I can tell you that in my route, when I took the opposite direction, I got lost. It was the same trees, but on the other side. It was very different route. And it's very different route from Rayma also at the moment. We are focusing on the consumer, not the wholesale client. So there is a bump, different turns. We need to recognize that that's the same tree, but the opposite direction. So where, we, where did we start? We start with the digital strategy, of course. Digital strategy, because digital is the easiest way that we can be agile, change things quickly. And also to have the data and analyzed responses. So that's what we did three years ago consistently and started to roll out the digital strategy from there. We have a digital strategy at the moment from 2021. So we know what are the steps in our roadmap what we need to achieve, what are the channels. But however, you know, as mentioned here already many times by Mikael and Katri, it's not easy. It's not easy to understand the context and the different touch points. However, this is the, in the end, what it comes from. Understanding the context, context of the usage of the product, weather conditions, but also the different elements where they are, where they are used. And the tip to toe to all, all of these layers. So we have expanded not only outerwear, but also the all layers of the, uh, what kids, kids are using in active life. So this is it as a baseline. However, when it's year around, safety, protection, and care, all of this focused on the activity lifestyle. What's, what is it now? Uh, talking about the transformation, it needs a common language, right? If I have a colleagues in my kind of management team with sourcing and logistics, or product design, or marketing, we need to have a common language. What's the language that we speak? It's not English. Customer. Exactly. It's the customer, the end customer. Who is that? For us, it's the Tumbjörn. No, it's not stay at home mom looking for a bargains. I have been that stay at home mom looking for a bargains. But that is not what we are aiming for and designing the services for. This is who do we design the services for? Thumbjörn. He's tech savvy. He has two kids. He's busy. He's demanding. If he doesn't get the service and the quality he wants, he basically drops. 
no interest afterwards. And this is the language that we speak in the management team, Thumbjörn language. We design for Thumbjörn. All do we do is for Thumbjörn, whether that is logistics, speed deliveries, or design of the products, detailed design, high quality, or digital services, needs to understand the context of the use. It's very different language that in the management team used to have. This is also the one of the vocabulary that we are having. It's the user journey. This is for the whole company. Whole company knows Thumbjörn. When I'm talking about the, with the wholesale sales, they know Thumbjörn. We can talk about Thumbjörn and how do we do the things for Thumbjörn. And this is the other kind of word in our vocabulary, in our common language. It's the journey, user journey. It's now in our wall. As you can see here, it's a kitchen area. Uh, we just moved into the new premises, and this was the, one of the first things that we put on the wall. There is a lot of stickers at the moment, a lot of ideas, innovations related to this journey. This is Thunbjörn's journey that we are uh, aiming for, that we all talk about. These are one of the, we called, user-centric toolkit elements that we are using as a company too. There is persona card about the Thunbjörn and other personas. There is personal data, so how much, what are the touch points, uh, etc. But there is also customized user journey. What are the each steps and the context user, uh, Thunbjörn is in? And these are the other personas. Of course, yes, there is stay-at-home mom, Annette, here. However, he's the secondary persona. We are not really designing the services and new things for her. She's following, though. Another key persona is, of course, Max or Lisa, we called him or her Ray Kid. Of course, in the center of our experience creation. Uh, this is also the something that we are still in a journey for. So how do we really make sure that Tumpion understands the quality of the product, understands why we are more expensive? And this is something that we are constantly developing in our user journey. This is it in a big scale. And like I said, for the whole company, it needs to be omnichannel. So it's not only the digital. However, it's not only the digital team either. It's for the whole company. As you can see in here, from the starting point, there are not only digital channels, but also stores. So do, that we understand that there is an omnichannel that feeds each other, omnichannel experiences. At the moment, in the digital uh, creation, we are focusing on the buying experience, of course. There are different steps, and we have a great partners that help with, with that. That is the great uh, focus area at the moment that we have had for two years, and that's basically the never-ending story. So how can we optimize the buying experience to the maximum level? There is never a maximum level, right? Of course, there is other key elements of the user journey, too. Use and engage, using the product, also having the Rayma Go in it. And of course, from the, basically before the birth, until 12-year-olds, we want to be with Thumbjörn. So that's the focus area for us in the future. How do we do it? I will, I will tell you later. And in the end, like I said, some of the products have more value when they are used than when they are both new. We have realized also that recycle is something that we want to focus on in the future. That's the key language, kind of word that we are using, user journey. And of course, agile in use. So making it smoother, uh, just smoother communication, faster cycles, 
We are using Trello's in every digital project, but also in product design nowadays. People are using, individually, they are using Trello's to manage their personal tasks. Think about that. So it's not something that digital team is using or digital development is using. It's something for everybody to understand the priorities in their own desk. We are using Slack as a whole company from China, from Russia. We are all in the same Slack channels. So we can share the information smoothly and quickly. And of course, we do have, related to the uh, smooth or quick recycles, we have PI plannings. You know the, maybe the terms, program increment. So how do we improve? We have those quarterly. We have started in digital development, but now we are moving on to the whole company. So whole fam management team is actually designing the PIs, the quarterly, what we are doing together, what we are improving. And in the end, of course, how do you create valuable experiences? Business growth, on the other hand, and customer experience, on the other. They can't be kind of separately live. They can't live separately. And how do we kind of uh, measure this at the moment? It's uh, average order value. That has increased actually 20% from last year. Think about it, 20% from last year, we have increased the average order value for the Thumbjörn. That's a lot. And the other thing is that what's the lifetime value of our customer? It has increased, I can tell you, also. These are the key metrics that we are, as a company, understanding. Not just digital development, but as a company. Good. So. Maybe the point in here, in this section, was that you know, it's not just something that can happen if we are you know, working together or keeping the progress. It, it's really that we need to collaborate across the silos and understanding the same metrics and same benefits as, as a company. Yeah, great word from Henry Ford. And uh, this leads to... This year, we are over 100 million. So 85 last year. This means we are, we are uh, sorry to say, but we are bigger than Marimekko. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So it's a big thing. Uh, so quickly about the future things then. So what it is. So it's really like mentioned already, joy of movement. It's about happy and healthy childhood, away from the product itself. Um, for us, we call it as a kind of elements that we want as a company. We want to be relevant. Relevant for the Thumbjörn. He's busy, right? So we guess that he wants to maybe order the boxes. That's something that we want to do in the future. Deliver the boxes for Thunbjörn. You know, we know that their kids are approximately, uh, you know, the growth is three to five centimeters per, uh, depending on the age. So we can estimate that what are the age or what is the last purchased uh, and the kind of preferences related to that. It's all about the personalization and it's all about the relevance. For Thumbjörn. But of course, it needs to be relevant for Max and Lisa too. So how do we keep it fun? So we don't want to be just another, you know, retailer. Just another company who does uh, kids' clothing. We want to make it fun for the kid. So there is a new, quite new innovation year ago launched, Raymago which we are kind of boosting the joy of movement. And we are application, but also the sensor. Sensor that is very low maintenance. You don't have to recharge it. You can't swallow it. You can wash it, actually, in the machine. Nothing happens. And that kind of service creation is now we are focusing on heavily in that in the future. 
how to make it fun. But of course, the user experience needs to be seamless across the devices. We need to understand the context. Context through the actual user journey of the Tombjörn. But yes, it's the Tombjörn still. A few words about Remago. Um, it has been a new, totally new thing for us as a company. We are not wearable manufacturer, right? We make kids' clothes. That's the, for <laughs> that's the kind of focus point for us. So uh, what we started is that, okay, we need a good partners. We partnered with Suunto. Suunto actually delivers these sensors for us. What we focused as a company was then the application recreation. And how can we make it fun? As you know, kids are just watching screens even more. So why we are in this business, why this is so important for Rayma to be in this business, wearable business or joy of movement business. Is this, this is the trend. Think about it. You can see, you all have seen this news across the, you know, different media. They can't even squat. Think about it. Finnish kids can squat. They can't do it because they watch so much screens. I mean, is that alarming? A little bit? Yes, <laughs> yes, we want to change that trend. However, at the moment, it's just growing. And it really, the change comes from the school-agers. So uh, below the school-agers, kids are naturally moving. But after that, it drops, says the studies. So with our kind of uh, innovation, we are focusing on now the, really focusing on changing that. So making that fun. I won't go through the details with you. But it really means that it's not the screen time. And have you ever kind of uh, been involved with the kind of sensor or something that actually boosts the activity and not the screen time for the kid? This is it that we want to get out of the Pokemon Go world, staring the screen. You don't need the screens. It's just a kind of scoreboard that you look with your uh, with your parents or with your friends as a kid. Quickly. Couple of screens in here. We are focusing on teams in the future, even more. So this is important that it's not something that you individually do. It's something that the group will do. Daycares is our actually quite booming client uh, segment at the moment for Raymago. So daycares are buying uh, Raymago's at the moment. And of course, we are developing and testing with kids, but also with parents. We do have a testing platform at the moment that we are using heavily in all of the different segments uh, in the company. So not only digital development, but the product design also, for example. Product design is having a new feedback for their uh, kind of clothing development. Yes, so this is not static thing. Everything in this user journey will change constantly. It's ever evolving. Some slots are changing more than others, but anyway, all of the slots are changing constantly. So you have to kind of get used to that. And as a whole company, get used to that. So CX really is in the center of the whole company, everybody. It's not something that digital person will do for you as a logistic person. No. It's for everybody. And then, Thun Björn is the common language. Vision for him and his kids. Also, the agile project lead. We do need that talent, and that's why we do need partners who are able to help with us with that. So partner network is actually very important for us. We don't have talent enough in-house to do the acceleration that we are doing at the moment. And in the end, but this is the most important, maybe, is the data. We can't do changes without the data, without understanding that, where that leads to us. 
And um, I love this picture, by the way. It's just, you know, really wide, fresh air, kid is running there. And that's the kind of essence that we want to have in the future. Freedom for kids to move from generation to generation, sustain sustainable world, but also the active life in the nature. That's what RAMA is all about. Thank you.